Welcome Sagittarius to your in-depth monthly horoscope for November 2023 for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to share some standout features for you but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater detail all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. I want you to mark the 10th, the 22nd and the 24th of November in your diary because on those days Mercury, the Sun and Mars transition into your sign. In fact in the last week of this month the Sun and Mars are in a conjunction in Sagittarius which is incredibly exciting. So much to share with you, please stay with me for more. With year 2024 speeding towards us, if you order your year 2024 personal horoscope forecast now, I'll prepare the rest of year 2023 for you, free of charge, but also in my special package of 30% off, I'll prepare for you your carrots analysis report, your life roadmap. This will give you searing insights to understand the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but helping you to get a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these in a really adroit way. Please see the link beneath this video for more information. So Sagittarius, as you make your way into the month of November, there is a delicate set of energies at play. The Sun, Mercury and Mars are all in the deep psychological sign of Scorpio which precedes your sign. In your personal journey the Sun in the 12th house can be a time of a need for reflection. It can see us withdrawing a little bit, reviewing what's gone on in the previous year. Mercury in the 12th house can see us less inclined to get in touch with other people, but equally we can feel that other people are less inclined to be in touch with us. But Mars in the 12th house can be really quite uh, complex. Mars here can stir up some latent injustices that may be lingering uh, in the very depths of your psyche. And what this can do is see us at times feeling very emotional in a tearful way, at other times feeling quite angry. And it can be hard to understand what these energies are about. But essentially the 12th house is just quite sensitive. It can see you feeling more vulnerable and it can make you more aware of who hasn't got your back so the people you can't rely upon so issues of trust can be to the fore as you begin this month but also as the month begins the sun is in an opposition with your ruler jupiter which currently is going through its retrograde which lasts to the end of the year the 31st of december but jupiter is in the part of your situation to do with work being of service um, being organized and potentially to do with your physical health. But the Sun's opposition with Jupiter is one of those polarities which actually can be really quite uh, lucky. And it's possible that a conversation you have can enlighten you to some of the way you, you respond to situations. So someone could give you some guidance or maybe you could read something, but it can be very illuminating. What's perhaps more complex is that Mercury in your 12th house is in an opposition to Uranus. If there is someone who tends to be quite picky and erratic that you need to work with, or you don't quite know what the terms of reference are in your situation, things keep moving and changing, that can make you feel quite on edge. But there's another influence going on that is between Venus and Neptune. And Venus starts this month in a part of your situation that's to do with how you connect to the wider world. And whatever sensitivities you may be experiencing deep within yourself, Venus can help you to maintain an implacable fa facade in terms particularly of your professional situation. But it is in an opposition with Neptune through the first week of this month, which is very, very delicate. And of course, Saturn moved into your fourth house of home and emotion on the 7th of March. And if you have found 
that generally you've been a little bit more caught up with understanding the need for security in your life since then or you've become closer to your family or a little bit less outgoing and gregarious it wouldn't really be a surprise and part of the reason for that is that Saturn went into a retrograde in mid-June and it emerges from that on the fourth of this month but Saturn does retain a, an incredible influence on uh, the month of November so even though it has been uh, really asking some searching questions about your emotional identity and your sense of security it does move forward also on the 8th Venus shakes off the rather mystical influence of Neptune and arrives in your sector of friendship ironically and if there has somebody has been somebody who seemed a little bit strangely out of touch if you do reach out you may be pleasantly surprised because with mercury in the 12th house perhaps even with mars too there can be a tendency to think if we don't hear from people that in some ways they're not particularly pleased with us but it's possible that someone's just been as caught up in their affairs as you have been but venus moving into your 11th house is really asking you to celebrate the things you have in common with people and if you are in a romantic relationship also the friendship side of that tie does become more important from this point however if you're single it's possible that you could get to know somebody as this month progresses from within your social activities but on the 10th this is the start of the shift of energy uh, when Mercury arrives in your sign. Now you're probably aware that Mercury is technically debilitated in the sign of Sagittarius and it immediately goes into a right angle with Saturn. So Saturn may be going forwards but from the 10th through to the 12th a very tense angle. What does this mean? Mercury brings you more into the present in terms of your thinking, maybe a little bit less worrisome, but it could push you to talk about something that you have been anxious about. But on the 13th there is a new moon in Scorpio. New moons are very much an opportunity to manifest what we wish. But the 12th house is one of the most complex of all new moons. It's not necessarily easy. And the moon in the sign of Scorpio is not at its strongest point in its journey. It's actually afflicted here. It's in its fall. And also Mars being very close to the moon in the 12th house suggests that if there has been something you've been ruminating on in the early parts of this month, and particularly if you feel there has been a betrayal a sense of support, a sense of recognition for the loyalty you've shown in the past. If someone, uh, as you see it, uh, tries to use your good nature or come to you for some kind of support without acknowledging that past help, I feel that you could uh, find your emotions extremely close to the surface. And it's possible that over the next month, you may actually open up and be much more voluble in terms of expressing any unhappiness that you have. But this is also a great opportunity, to be honest, to ventilate those grievances in a very healthy way. I think that in the Western world, we do have this, uh, this uh, sort of uh, sense of expectation that we should always manage our emotions in such a way that we never get particularly tearful or particularly angry but actually it's really healthy to release either our upset and uh, and grief and it's also positive to have the odd shout because it's just human uh, it's just natural to the human uh, nature that we all have so if we suppress things that's when a lot of unprocessed emotions, bits and pieces, build up. And I think it's something that Sagittarius people can do because you're innately very positive. And even if you do have setbacks because you're a fire sign, but very flexible, you have great courage to dust yourself down and go again. But bits and pieces of residue that build up can become quite uh, quite a big and compelling set of energies that are trying to take away from 
our vitality. So if there are emotional uh, strands that do need resolving, this can be a great opportunity to grapple with them. And this can be particularly so from the 18th through to the 22nd. You may also find that past effort and sacrifices um, and perhaps research that you've done in the past can start to come back to you in a way that may have not seemed easy to appreciate then, but you can start to see how all the knowledge and uh, insights that you've gained are actually forging a real body of information that's been hugely helpful to you, even if it's been painful uh, gaining that insight. But the 22nd is truly exciting. The sun returns to your sign for the first time in 11 months. It's followed by Mars on the 24th. So the last phase of this month, the last quarter, has the sun and Mars together in your sign. If you have gone through some uh, very delicate but emotional moments early in the month, the wonderful news about this combination is that they can help to bring you truly into the moment and truly on the front foot. But you have to still be mindful of the role of Saturn because Saturn squares up with the Sun and Mars. So things may not still move forwards at quite the pace you would like. There may be some family responsibilities. Uh, someone close to you may need a lot of support. It may be the physical structure that you live in needs some repairs. There may be uh, some uh, limitation around the actual environment of where you live that you find difficult, too quiet, too noisy, um, too remote, too busy, uh, too close to traffic, uh, too far away from a bus route, because the fourth house is your environment. And that environment with Saturn uh, involved, along with Neptune, is really asking some searching questions about what's really best for you. And you have to balance that with another part of your nature, which is naturally very adventurous, very freedom loving, likes to experiment, uh, is very lively, fun. Uh, and so you could find that you're not quite uh, cooking on gas in quite the way you would like in these latter parts of the month. And part of the reason for it too is that Mercury in your sign is squared off by Neptune from the 25th to the 30th, which means if you are feeling anything uh, in terms of your emotional situation isn't quite as you would like, other people's needs or feelings or opinions or viewpoints can actually tend to, to drag you down a little bit and uh, deflate some of your enthusiasm. But that brings us to the Gemini full moon of the 27th. And it's possible with that fierce combination between the Sun and Mars in your sign that your desire to strike out in a new direction or to assert yourself, to start a new venture or inject energy into an ongoing strand, it's possible that somebody you're closely involved with sees things very differently. And it could be a family member. It could be a housemate. It could be a friend, someone in your community or a partner. And the reason this is such a complex full moon is that the Gemini energy with the moon is uh, very flexible, like your sign, but it likes to work through the prism of communication, through the mind, rather than the emotion. But Saturn is in your fourth house of emotion, and Saturn's reminding you in a very major way of what you need to be more responsible and mindful of. So whether it's around a romantic attraction, an ongoing relationship, the viewpoint of a family member about something you want to change in your life, I feel that there could be a burden, a sense of burden around all of this, which you do find very restrictive and very frustrating. So although there is this superb energy coming into your sign as this month develops, it does come with some celestial strings attached in the shape of Saturn and Neptune, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't make progress because the big picture, Sagittarius, is that Saturn is asking you to become much more aware of what you need in terms of security, be it physical or emotional. 
and the part of your nature that was such a free spirit in the past is probably what not what you need anymore you're actually becoming more aware of the need for security in a way that may have been alien to you some months or years ago and so it's part of a process that you're still acclimatizing to once Saturn gets the, to the end of its journey in the sign of Pisces in 2026 and moves into Aries, it will all have fallen into place. You would have created the template that works for you, where you can balance the freedom love inside of your nature with that more stable foundation. And that is really what you're being asked to work on. So see the role of Saturn as an opportunity as much as using your imperious enthusiasm either in week one of this month in the opposition between the sun and jupiter or the last week of this month your enthusiasm is still there it's still intact it just is going to be tempered by a greater awareness that you're developing and it's this the evolution that you're going through is very very exciting it's just it's not going to go at the speed of light which when you were perhaps in past times your appetite to change things quickly and to pivot in a new exciting direction was all very stimulating but often left you with perhaps not a lot of an anchor at the root of your life and that's really what saturn is providing you the opportunity to establish